Um, this is JC from the Real and Simulated Wars blog. I'm here playing Panzer Battles, another John Tiller game. Uh, this one was released uh, a while back. It is the Kursk uh, uh, release for um, the southern flank, I believe it was called. The web page, I can show it to you, it is right here. It is in um, www.johntillersoftware.com and you will see this entire uh, uh, series called Panzer Battles and here you have Battles of Kursk, the southern flank, that's the right name for this. In case that you're not familiar, I will provide a very brief description but you can go to uh, the web page and find even a demo for this engine which is a very nice uh, uh, gift and it will allow you to take a look and decide if it is for you. So uh, this game, this war game, it is a, a tactical and grand tactical level of warfare game. It goes all the ways from, the scenarios go all the way from regiments and brigades all the way up to corps. That's the biggest scenario that I dare to play. It is, um, uh, of course, it's a turn-based, X-based war games. Each of these um, little hexagons is around 250 uh, meters wide. The units are all all the way from uh, platoons, like this one that I have highlighted here, to all the way uh, up to companies. Let me find the company somewhere like this one here, a Panzer a Grenadier uh, a company of around 96 men. Uh, the game is very, very uh, fluid, very, very nice. The scenarios are perfectly sized. You can play by email or you can play solo. Some scenarios are suited for that. And uh, if you never try this engine, I highly recommend to you know, please download the demo and see if it is for you. Uh, I recognize that many of you follow me in my YouTube channel because I play a lot of uh, tactical 3D war games and, and whatnot, like Common Mission of the Gravity Team series. But, um, uh, well, this is also what I do. And uh, I believe there is a lot of value in this type of uh, old school war games. And... Uh, there is, um, you know, historical uh, value is, 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 is very, very, very high. So, uh, how I got here? Well, I got here because last week I got this book. Uh, no, not here, wrong screen, I'm sorry. Got this book by uh, Dr. Uh, Zamulin, or Zamulin, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, this is the... Uh, I don't know if he's a professor, but I do believe he has a PhD, and uh, he's a Russian author, and he has been published, publishing a lot about the Battle of Kursk. He's the guy who uh, authored the book uh, "The Demolishing the Myth," which was about the uh, famous or infamous tank battle at the at that train station that everybody knows about it. So this book in page uh, 199 if i remember correctly at least in this edition that i got uh, puts the seventh panzer division exactly where the scenario that i'm about to play is um is actually uh, located and the situation is very well described there what were the intentions and what was the progress that the seventh panzer division made uh, in in this case, so there is actually another book that makes a very scant version. Uh, this book, uh, Panzer Krieg, but uh, Franz Gurowski. Uh, this one is a very nice book too. It has uh, an impressive amount of uh, Panzer operations, all the way up to uh, all the way down to uh, uh, divisions, and uh, there is a mention for the Seventh Panzer Division to what he was doing exactly uh, at that point of the battle. Uh, the, the page that this is located in this particular edition, it is uh, page one, uh, 415. 415. Uh, the description is a bit uh, less detailed because this is a very 
general type of book but is also very military history oriented so uh very nice to see you know to find uh, that uh, actually war game uh relates or is kind of showing you and letting you face the challenges for uh a particular battle that you're playing in a war game so this is a zoom without the version i just wanted to show you what the seventh panzer division is facing it is uh july the 5th of 1943 all the fun is about to begin these um uh, these uh, particular scenario is located in the southern flank of the of the kursk offensive this is part of the Actually, uh, the 7th Panzer Division back in that time was part of the uh, 3 Panzer Corps and uh, they were supposed to uh, support the 2nd SS uh, Panzer Corps, I believe, too. And, uh, well, as you can see right here, all the blue icons are my, uh, my units. Uh, my headquarters is located right there. Our... Uh, uh, general it is general lieutenant von funk or funk i don't know how to pronounce that and uh, he's in charge of all these uh assets right here and uh well the thing that i like to do it is to highlight the organization uh highlighted in yellow over there you will see all the assets that these um um unit has right now so I, i'm gonna keep that one uh highlighted over there you will see that some assets some units are um uh, are still uh fixed because there is a pretty much a tough uh traffic jam if if you see this uh i mean one has to admire what these guys did um, this is an armored division, a fully motorized division, and they crossed the southern Donets, Donets, which is this river right here. Let me see if I can find um, a way to take out all the units. Where was this? Right there. This is the to hide the units. You see that river over there. Uh, so. Uh, there are actually right now at this point there are three uh, bridges that were laid out by engineers there is the southern bridge uh, this other one which I will call the middle and then this north bridge uh, but then there is all these systems of bunkers that are you know kind of provided in echelon here which is typical Russian defensive uh, arrangement uh, which is great, but uh, you know the re the thing that really knocks my socks off it is how to get the Panzer division through all this terrain, uh, which is uh, marshes. You see marsh. I'm highlighting to the left. You see everything is like a freaking marsh, and um, well, I guess if I show you the scenario, I'm gonna spoil it a little bit. There are minefields in front of it, so you have to pull your engineers, you have to f actually ferry units across the river, or use the bridges, and it, the challenges are really gigantic. One thing that I thought, that was actually a bit disappointing from this engine, it is that, you know, each, uh, uh, each axe is 250 meters, and the f my first reaction was like, well, you know, while I cross my units, I'm going to use a smoke. But uh, unfortunately, if you cross this unit right there and you lay a smoke here and a smoke here, if there is an enemy unit over there, it will not block it from fire. Even if there is a smoke here and here, a friendly unit here can be subjected to enemy fire from there it is a way that the engine works i don't know what's the rationale bit for that but um that was a bit uh, of a let down because you cannot mask your units uh that are immediately crossing and while they cross they lose all their movement points which is triple challenge it's like a big gigantic mess so i don't know what i'm gonna do when i play this scenario uh, but coming back to the books, uh, uh, the 7th Panzer Division, apparently, according to what I'm reading over there, 
they didn't have too much issue to reach this uh, uh, railroad embankment, embankment over there at this station. And they finally, after, well, I have to say one day or not, they got into this town over here. And uh, it was a bit of the highlight of the, uh, of the southern pincer of the Kursk offensive, being that this was a supporting attack. So uh, that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you what I'm going to be playing. Uh, usually I don't get too much views when I play this type of war games. So uh, leave a comment if you want to see some gameplay from, from this scenario. I just wanted to present you this and uh, let you know what I'm up to. And uh, like or don't like. Uh, it doesn't matter. Always read the comments and uh, let me know. Thank you.